Hello, everyone. I'm Kim. I'm Sami. <laughs> I'm Curtis. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us today for our workshop on incorporating feedback on scholarly writing. The purpose of the presentation is to help you strengthen your writing through providing strategies for responding to feedback and evaluating suggestions that you're given. Um, this presentation is also for those who have already solicited feedback from faculty, peers, or journals and need an efficient method for sifting through the suggestions or comments that you're given. So before we offer suggestions on how to address the feedback you're given, we're going to reflect on the different types of feedback that exist. And I do not believe that this is an exhaustive list, but the general forms of feedback typically fall within these broad categories. So the very first type of feedback we have is corrective feedback. And this identifies an action or an approach that should be rectified and likely not repeated again. And this could be a suggestion to change the method of your research or the approach to your topic so that it is more concise for your audience. The second type of feedback that we have is directive feedback. And this is more of an instruction and it tells you what you need to do. For example, a comment might say, you need to add the author of the source in your in-text citation. That is a directive. The third type of feedback is interactive feedback. And this encourages dialogue and deliberation. Oftentimes it asks a question such as, have you ever considered X, Y, Z? And it seeks to gain your perspective and learn your intention for making the choices that you did in your writing. And the last type of feedback we have is evaluative feedback. And this comments on your overall process and letter grades are considered to be um, evaluative feedback. But comments such as you're well on your way or you're doing an excellent job is also evaluative feedback. So also before diving into the comments you have received, you want to think about the type of feedback you ask for from your advisor, your colleague, or whoever else is serving as your writing accountability. Um, and this will help you to prioritize the feedback that you have received and make your focus much more specific during your revision process. Um, you want to keep in mind that every reviewer, whether from your discipline or not, offers suggestions for changes based on their own experiences and knowledge. And knowing this influences how you receive and make use of the feedback that you're given. Um, on a similar note, many of us determine the topic of our writing according to our personal passions and interests. As such, um, we can have a connection to the work that prevents us from seeing the benefits of an outsider's perspective. However, like the last point suggests, remember that everyone has something to contribute as, as a result of their acquired knowledge and experiences. And lastly, as you approach your feedback, make plans to categorize the comments you have received based on its focus. And Curtis will share more about what those focal points could look like and, and why they are essential. Right, so now we're talking about these different feedback focal points and what we have here is a list that is organized from the global to local concerns. So those are things that are starting more big picture and then getting down into the nitty gritty, which could be anything like a comma or use of a uh, semicolon. So starting with the general feedback, that's going to be things like, oh, this is really great or this is something that you can expand on and do really well. Generally, these are words of praise or overall statements. Moving into organization, someone could ask you, why is it that you decided to start with your case study as opposed to starting with a literature review? And this would be a question of how it is that you're presenting the information inside your text and what kind of um, meaning that conveys. Moving down to content, again, if you could have a section in your literary review or in your literature review where you are missing a theory or you don't go deep enough into a theory. And if someone asks you to elaborate on that, that would be considered something in regards to content. Looking at discipline specific information, if you were to write something in, let's say biology, I might not have the expertise to give you discipline specific information about cell division or something along those lines. Someone like your professor or your thesis advisor would be able to give you information or feedback that would let you know how it is your field expects you to write and what it is that you might be expected to include. Moving down to lexical, that's a case of diction. So this could be an instance of somewhere where the words that you're using doesn't really clearly convey the information that you want it to, or there's some ambiguity. So usually those suggestions will ask you to elaborate, explain what it is that you mean with the use of a certain word and build on that. 
Mo lastly, moving down to grammatical, again, this is the most local concern, and that's issues such as commas, semicolons, um, sometimes it can include citations as well, and that's usually the last step of revision in which you're really just trying to polish a piece before you send it off for publication. Now, there are a couple things to consider when you are revising and when you're receiving feedback. One of them is the genre that you're writing in. So as you can see on the screen, you can have things such as institutional documents. So that could be something like a, dissert a dissertation chapter, a part of a thesis, a prospectus, and these have specific genre conventions that you need to uh, consider. A resume or a cover letter also has its own genre conventions and expectations. These genre conventions are usually in place to help readers understand what it is that you're saying and quickly find information. Another thing to consider is the use of, or the consideration of audience. And so when you're thinking about your audi audience, just like with a genre, you wanna consider what it is that is a norm or expectation. So when you're writing for your boss or when you're writing for your dissertation uh, advisor, you might be expected to use different terminology or to approach a conversation in a specific way. Remembering what it is that your audience's expectations and what their experiences and knowledge are is really important to conveying your message and making sure they understand what it is that you're talking about. Yeah, based on my experiences, uh, I usually get overwhelmed with a lot of specific um, information or feedback that I received from the reviewer. So we would like to suggest some of the uh, organization um, suggestions uh, when you received a lot of feedback. So first thing I would do is to uh, create a spreadsheet to organize feedback. Doing this, uh, a lot of feedback or specific information uh, that you received from the reviewer can be easily placed in neat column and rows and then sorted by the feedback type. Although a lot of specific information and detailed feedback in a review may be overwhelming to view at uh, its raw state, but spreadsheet may help you to organize your feedback in a better way. Organize the suggestions you have received in order, for, uh, in order of uh, importance. You may want to focus on global issues first, as Curtis shared previously, and then move on to the local issues. Read write feedback in your own word to help you understand it better. You may want to take a moment first to think about the feedback you received, whether that makes sense to you or not. And then you want to rewrite that in your own word so that you have better understanding about the feedback. Consider crafting a writer's memo to help you organize your revision process. While you're attending to the feedback, you would want to write a memo or a kind of journal to keep track of your revision process so that you don't have to waste any time to get on the point where you left previously. Okay, we're gonna do some more activity in this. I will share sample feedback that I received from the reviewer, and then I will uh, go through how I'm going to approach it, this feedback. Let me share the screen first. Okay, this is a sample paper. Uh, before I get into the comments, reviewer's comments, I would like to give you some background information about my paper. The title was uh, When Preparation, Preparation Matters, a Mixed Method of Study of In-Service Teachers' Preparation to Serve. English learners. This was a conference paper, but I also submitted to the journal. It's a teacher education journal. And I got a two reviewers' comments. And those comments are pretty like summative style of the feedback. And I will read this through first. The paper has a clear and important aim to study teachers' efficacy working with the ELs. However, the theoretical framework did not clearly address the local control theory, which guided the qualitative data analysis. The method and results are not clearly pre presented to allow generalization of findings. For example, the sample characteristics are not clearly described quantitative analysis. Given the small new teacher sample size, the division into four groups is less meaningful. Only descriptive statistics, but no ANOVA was used for. Yeah, this is a kind of summative feedback, but with the kind of details. 
Second reviewers commented uh, two things. First, citation would be better for the definition of self-efficacy. Second, it probably needs support sentences or further explanation for the other construction of self-efficacy, mastery, experience, and needs transitions as well. So once I receive this feedback, as we talked about previously, I will create a kind of spreadsheet. Since I'm going to just use the word document, I will insert probably just table. So before I'm doing the table, yeah, let's just check out what feedback types I have. So first one, the reviewers were talking about the theoretical framework. So I would color it with a different color. And then another thing, he pointed out method section, especially sample characteristic. Then he was talking about the use of different software for statistic wizard. And second reviewers, they talk about citation. And then better definition for self-efficacy is a related uh, theory or framework similar to the first reviewers comment they asked me some more details about the sentence level and construction of the self-efficacy mastery experience is also part of the theoretical framework the last thing he was talking about the transition once i color coded i would uh, categorize those comments into types of feedbacks. The first one was the uh, theoretical framework. And second was method. Third, once I categorize those feedback into uh, themes, and I can just write down what feedback I have from the reviewers. So it was the And the method was a participant characteristic. Quant analysis tool was NOVA. Uh, when I, you're looking at the first uh, theoretical framework, it makes sense to me. So I would definitely add some information about better definition of self-efficacy, focusing on mastery experiences, and method section, yeah, when I look at their feedback, it makes sense to me as well. So I would uh, add more details profile of the participant. However, the third one, ANOVA, the use of the different types of the quantitative analysis tool, since I used the different types, which, is, uh, which was uh, SPS, I'm, going, I'm not going to follow what reviewers suggested, but I just uh, will explain what type of the software I use for my data analysis. Citation and transition organization also I am going to attend those feedback by adding more citations and transition organization or transition sentences. I think this is pretty much I'm going to approach how I'm going to approach the feedback that I received from the reviewers. Great, so just like what Sungae was sharing, was that a spreadsheet is a really great way to organize the feedback that you receive, especially when you're receiving a lot of comments. So some reviewers might give you inline comments or line by line editing or responses, and that might result in a lot of feedback they don't even really know where to start. So using that spreadsheet, whether it be a table in a Word document or using Excel, those are great ways to get things organized and put them into categories. That way you can start again from the global and work down to the local. Another concern that we had brought up in our live uh, workshop was how do you not get discouraged when you're seeing so many comments or you're getting an evaluation that says, hey, you're a ways off from where you should be. 
Um, and I think one thing that's really important to remember is that the people that you're receiving feedback from, whether they be professors, your advisor, or even the peer reviewers for an article that you're submitting, the reason why they're giving you feedback is because they want you to be able to succeed and be able to create the best work that you can. It's not a, an evaluation of saying that you're not capable. It's just saying, hey, we're going to help you get to the place that you need to be to enter the field. So that concludes our workshop for today. I hope you all found the tips and suggestions that were given helpful. If you have further questions or concerns, you're welcome to visit us at the Writing Lab virtually at the moment. I mean, go to al.purdue.edu slash writing lab and one of the tutors will be glad to help you. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Bye.